I've been debating what I want to call this thing, and I can't get around the the same old like we're going to talk about selling on Amazon, and it's a podcast, and the selling on Amazon podcast. But is that name just too stupid or elementary, or is no, it just fine? It's just fine. <laughs> oh, it's already, is it already taken? Oh, good question. Yeah, uh, it's it's funny. You always got to do that trademark search when you start a new brand, right? It's like, is it taken? Yeah, is it? I mean, that's the thing. I mean, there's so many. There's a lot of Amazon podcasts out there, and you have to find out if it, if it's okay, available. I mean, there's the the selling. The on, I'm, doing, I'm gonna Google it. I Googled it and nothing came up. That's a good start. Oh, there you go. So it's a good start. Podcasts, searching podcasts. Selling on Amazon podcast. There's one called Amazon FBA podcast. Yeah. And then and then there's one with a guy with no shirt on called Actualize Freedom. He literally is wearing no shirt like straight up nipples cool <laughs> and then uh oh, one way to get your seat name out there all right guys then, let's do this and then we have how to sell on it and then we have selling on amazon mm. that's what it's called so that might be a little conflict mm. selling on well, amazon you, what about what about private label amazon 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 private labels Um, maybe. Okay. So by the time you listen to this pod, whoever one or two individuals listen to episode one and whoever you are, you guys are creeps because no one should be listening to this episode, but whoever's listening to this episode is going to know what that name is and they're going to find it and they're going to see what we decided on. So that's going to be the mystery sandwich for for ourselves then we could so, we could probably also as the as the content comes together we can find new names and kind of like oh that's super applicable i mean but selling an amazon podcast for now okay good let's do it yeah so uh just for the one listener my name is ian page and i i don't sell on amazon today so this is a slight misnomer but i do manage about oversee managing about a hundred brands on Amazon. And I, um, I'm located in the great state of Florida and I'm with here. My, uh, my, my partners in crime, Michael Esty and Ryan Dumini. Why don't you guys introduce yourself and tell people what type of dinner and walk on the beach you prefer? Uh, my name is Michael. I've been selling Amazon since 2014, the end of 2014. Um, I've been in, several i built several brands um mostly in the skincare and a little bit in supplements um but i had uh i was actually building a company for five years um i originally had my own amazon company i built it and um made a lot made a lot of money merged it with a, a different company uh built up another four amazon accounts there and uh now just have an equity stake in them and um so yeah, I've been in the world for a very, very long time. A very long, almost time. ten years. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I've been uh, an e-commerce marketing for I don't know, well over seven years now. Um, started off as a Google guy, um, getting leads for brick and mortar businesses, m firstly my own business, and then uh, onto friends and family, and then uh, built in moved into an e-commerce direction and uh ian i found you maybe three four years ago now i don't know a while ago i don't even know how long and um sort of turned my attention onto amazon um because ian was working with amazon sellers i i, I still have my own brand and um with another partner two other partners and um yeah i started focusing initially um attention on, on on google to amazon ads bringing in attribution working with all the different um, solutions to to provide insights into that and i suppose that just blossomed into running full service and you know everything that surrounds off of amazon marketing and now on amazon marketing um with multiple multiple teams underneath me um location i'm anywhere in the world i'm traveling mm. around 
<laughs> Where um, is Ryan Dumini? Yeah, exactly. I'm, you know, sailing around on my boat most of the time, um, if I have a choice. And uh, in between Bahamas and Florida, um, I am a, uh, I, I'm an official resident of the UAE at this point in my life. And I uh, go back and visit family in Cape Town, South Africa, whenever I can save up enough money and make that happen. <laughs> That's nice. And somehow we all converge together, us three. And I feel like this podcast could be of entertaining of entertainment purposes, really. Like, obviously, there's education in selling on Amazon, and and you, us three have aggregated a huge amount, a crap ton of data on what works, what doesn't work. Um, yeah. But I have a hard time just sitting here and lecturing people for hours and hours on end on like what you know what keywords to choose on a title. I just it's just it's just not my thing. So I kind of put this together as like a relaxing conversation piece so that people can i guess get a little bit of entertainment between some little important education nuggets and that's kind of my inspiration for this pod yeah i love it well i mean yeah, that, honestly yeah. if you look at like all the different like when i'm driving my car and i'm gonna listen to podcasts about you know seasoned sellers on amazon like it's tough to find stuff it's tough to find actual really good there's really content out there but you have to sift through a lot you know and so Finding just like a consistent podcast that you can listen to. I went through like six different podcasts, trying to like find one that I can consistently like, oh, this is good. And then the other one was just like arbitrage selling. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm uh, not really applicable uh, to what I'm doing. And it's just, it's tough to find content. Yeah. I opinion. agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, so I, I, you know, so there, there's obviously going to be no like specific agenda to this every once in a while i think when there's big amazon news like stuff does go down i think we should bring up the obvious stuff that's like happening right now um it's pretty quiet it's 2024 it's january um, yeah. it's pretty quiet amazon has not made any huge fba moves in the last like i mean what's the last move you guys have seen the last big like newsworthy thing that happened well they're about to make one what's that Word, word down the pipeline is they're getting rid of the uh, male enhancement category. Oh. Yeah. Like the testosterone stuff? Yeah, anything related to testosterone boosters, male enhancement, they want to clean it up. Why do you think they're why do you think they're worried about that? Like that would that, like why would they take a whole category out that probably produces, you know, billions of dollars every year? What do you think's hitting there? in their legal team that makes them concerned um probably my guess is with the advent of uh the whole manufacturing um a revamp in 2024 and that's gonna they're probably predicting a lot is going on with that and uh because i mean any, any most supplements uh in regards to testosterone boosting and so on and so forth have so much certifications and manufacturing stuff around them um it could be related to that or it just could be that um you know like years ago amazon got rid of the entire sexual wellness category like they're just like disbanded it basically and they're they're just hunkering down it's another part of that they're trying to make it maybe like a family friendly uh shopping pl platform you know with nothing um like that and trying to stick uh, so it's hard to tell what their actual intentions for doing that are I'm sure they have multiple, but but a lot of that shit is like workout enhancement mainly. It's not really actually like dick pills. Like let's, it's really more towards like building muscle, as far as I see. No, I know. I well, I mean, I think they're first going to do like the sexual enhancement. Like you know, this is a, a natural herbalic alternative to Viagra. Basically, I think they're going for those first. And there's actually quite a few. If you look at Amazon, there's a lot of. Uh, like full male enhancement I type see. deal products on there. Yeah. It's but probably then, like, but then I think it's going to affect those products because they're they're gonna have a hard time discerning which one's different, you know? Hey, this is for workout yeah. enhancement. Hey, this is for dick enhancement. Yeah. It's that's a tough one because what's gonna happen is sellers are gonna be like, they're gonna figure it out. They're gonna be like, okay, what can I say? What can't I say? Then they then they're gonna put lipstick on a pig or whatever they do to to, to disguise the fact that it's still a dick pill, but they're gonna sell it as a freaking you know, um, you know, an ashwagandha yeah. vitamin. Yeah. yeah, exactly. 
And they're going to make like graphics that probably like subliminally communicate with the AI. The AI it's like attack. it's like that looks that looks like either a sausage or a penis. I can't quite tell. <laughs> what am I dealing with here? Yeah. It's like tell me, tell me you're going to last longer without telling me you're going to last longer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 what and what male confidence means? Male confidence. I think that means yeah. All right. Well, that's some news. Um, what do you guys think about, what do you guys think right now in 2024 is like, you know, you guys both manage brands. What's the biggest challenge right now in, um, on a day-to-day -day basis? Is it still the FBA fees being super high and cost per click? Are those basically it right now? Well, GPC, those, yeah. you could take that Ryan, but you know, I've, I've stuff to say about that always. <laughs> I mean, for me, you know, just specializing in the PPC space specifically, I definitely think CPC is killing people, killing them badly. And it's definitely forcing a large number of them to be looking at other avenues and where to drive the traffic from. Mm. You know, it's like, you know, this is, they just can't be profitable a lot of the time. I mean, if you drive it back, it, it you know, there's multiple reasons for that. It's not just Amazon CPC, you know, I think, you know, they're probably not managing their businesses correctly in the first place. And, not having enough margin on a hero product to to focus on to absorb that and lead the way in terms of you know um, absorbing the cost and, and, and cross selling or upselling into the smaller margin products. But you know once it's done, it's done, and they're in the positions they're in. The only way to get out of it is to launch another potential hero, um, which comes with its own challenges, or to find um, alternative sources of traffic which are cheaper and try keep but eke out that margin for as long as possible interesting makes me think for some reason of like these in influencer brands that don't really rely on amazon ppc you know like that courtney kardashian brand was i talking to you guys about that brand the other day who was i talking to yeah no, uh, yeah it's like you know she's got like 100 and something million followers on instagram her TikTok's probably just just as big i mean she's you know the kardashian name is top one of the top 25 names in the world right and it's like she starts a supplement brand sells gummies yeah i was talking to you michael and, and our client and yeah, that's right. and she can come in and literally have the worst images of all time and their packaging could be super strange her brand if she just launched it without the name it would be it, it would do okay I think it's actually a decent name. What's the name again? Lemmy, Lemmy, Lemmy Live? Lemmy, yeah. Uh, Lemmy. So I think it's kind of clever. Like, I actually think there's some aspects to it that would still do pretty well. But she's like dominating the categories. I talked to a client the other day and he's like, I've been the number one weight loss up on Amazon for years. And all of a sudden she comes in and she beats me. So that's that's kind of a it's kind of an interesting thing how like influencers are coming in and they're like dominating amazon without really needing to dominate amazon all they have to do is a post well i I've, I've worked with influencers that were private labeling and they could come in and dominate in literally one month uh all the most major keywords i mean literally like you know even if they have only 1.9 million followers on TikTok, you know so it's like um i you know uh i had an influencer i worked with they came in private labeled um launched on amazon used their TikTok traffic and their social following um and got number two and number one for like three hundred thousand search volume keywords in one month and kept it but um and i think that's like a big part of like the whole myth, myth of the, the amazon a10 algorithm and that's why it's all like traffic based because of stuff like that that's happening it's it's like amazon's traffic base which is like google google's also traffic based so it's it's based on tick the, these influencers coming in sending a million people to a listing in 30 days and uh sure only one percent of people buy or two percent or three percent but it's so small so your conversion rate is is shit. it's awful but it's so much traffic to Amazon and Amazon loves that. So, and yeah, they'll get number one, but it's, and, and that's why like the best person, if you think about the best person to start an Amazon account is an influencer. Um, an influencer with a million followers on TikTok 
or they have like half a million followers on Instagram. I mean, they do a few posts, they send a million people to Amazon or half a million people in a short time span over three weeks. Um, they're going to dominate the category. They're going to take people who have been selling for years. They'll just take them out in a month. Dude, that's, I just literally thought about it. We should all start calling and DMing influencers and be like, Hey guys, do you own a brand? You don't. All right. We're going to be your partner. We're going to, we're going to start a brand with you. Like that would actually be a freaking business model for somebody. Like if I had a supplement yeah. manufacturing company, if I was, if I like had a big supplement manufacturing company, I would just reach out to health and wellness influencers and be like, I want to partner with you. I want to partner with you. I want to partner. With you. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, yeah, they're, I've definitely done that business strategy. It's very successful. I mean, if you have, or even some people just have access to be able to use the influencers, like have a pool of people they work with, with some other, you know, they just have an in to get, you know, these people, uh, brand ambassadors, I guess you can call it like permanently. So, but either, either circumstance, if you're an influencer or can you use brand ambassadors like that, you are going to have so much success, especially with Amazon, which has a 60% or higher, better average conversion rate than any other platform. You know, like all of these guys will build their own website and they'll get their own like sales of whatever items they're going to private label. But when they, the second they go live on Amazon, we're talking a multi-million dollar company in like a month. Do you think that this hurts Amazon in a way too? Because think about it. Like if you're an influencer, you got millions of followers, you don't need Amazon. You could do TikTok shop. You could do your website. Like Amazon's taking percentage of your sales and you're kind of like, I don't fucking need to give 15% of my sales to Amazon. Screw them. I spent years to build this up. All I need is a checkout page. Right. Amazon's going to say, good luck. That's basically yeah. what they're going to do. They're going to be like, well, you know, go to your checkout page and see how much you can produce on there. Right. If you're producing, if you're producing 10 grand a day in sales, I can produce 30. It's always, I've seen it. The average yeah. I've seen across influencers on their own website and versus Amazon is 5.4. 5.4. 5 Amazon Eight sales minutes. to their own Shopify. Oh, so 5.4 yeah, we'll X. 10 grand a day for sure. But Amazon will do, you know, 50 grand a day in sales while they're doing 10, 54 grand a day. So you have to think that, sure, Amazon's going to take their percentage, but unless you have like negotiated shipping rates for your Shopify, you're going to offer free shipping. It's going to be like five to eight dollars in shipping costs on a on a, when you're when you're sending out a package too. So and sometimes you'd be surprised that you know it's not that much different. Sure, there's a little bit more profit, but because if you're not advertising in Shopify, if you're just doing using your own traffic, but you're going to want to advertise a little bit, like retargeting and email and having all that stuff set up too in SMS. To get the most amount of to get that 10 grand day in sales mm. amazon is going to do all that for you too all that marketing costs so, so what do you guys think about mary ruth being valued at over a billion dollars do you guys hear about that i think they're undervalued i invest <laughs> did you hear about that ryan well, yeah I I've, heard, not... I've heard about that you didn't hear about that over over a billion dollars yeah yeah valuation. That's because I mean, you're right. sales. that's all that's all your that's it's it's all your work, Brian. Every, yeah. They owe you everything. <laughs> but she'll at least give you ten percent. <laughs> at least. <laughs> or or like what size is your what size is your sailboat right now? Forty eight feet. Yeah, they should they should give you like a seventy five footer for what you've done. Yeah. Done. I think so. I mean it's chop change at a billion. <laughs> <laughs> so I was uh Michael and I were in the uh on a yacht the other day not because we're rich but because we hang out with people that rent yachts that's literally why we were there and um we were trying to like price out boats like i was like driving around and like what do you think that one is what do you think that one is what do you think that one is and we i saw this boat that was like parked do you remember do you, do you remember that boat that we went, on the way back michael it was like parked underneath the skyscraper apartment complex there was like two of yeah. them uh, Brian. I wish you were there because I wish you could have told us how much you think that boat is, but it was a yacht. It was probably about, what do you think, 75? No, probably, no, 100, 100 feet. So like mega yacht. 
Yeah, I, I wouldn't call I wouldn't call it a mega. Like it wasn't like it didn't have a helipad. You know what I mean? But it was like it was like the most beautiful, sleek. It looked like a spaceship on the water. It was so like the panels were like just space age. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like gold colors with bronze. Um, and it was parked right up against this condo complex that was like right on the water. And I was thinking, whoever owns this boat probably owns the penthouse top floor, the entire top floor of this of this uh, apartment complex. And I was trying to figure out what what a boat like that would run. Twenty five million. I mean, it's hard million? to say without seeing it. But you know, you could you could pick you could pick those things up for anywhere between three to how long's a piece of string? Okay, okay. How long's a piece of string? You know, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. You're entering yeah. the world where there's always someone with more. Yeah, like the, like the helipad example. I think I saw a yacht. I don't know if it was Jeff Bezos's that literally had a helipad on it. And I was like, okay, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, you go to St. Martin. Yeah. Go to St. Martin. You, you go there, November, December. It's just madness. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to fathom. And these these it, they're not just sitting there, you know. They've got paid crew full time, and these guys constantly make food. They're constantly, you know, um, prepping because the owners of the boats a lot of the time want to be able to, at a whim, decide to go, and they need their food. They need their stuff ready for them, so they just need to arrive. And okay, here we go. Take me on a two week whatever because that's why I got this thing. Make me have the time of my life, and then you know whatever pressures build up at that time, they'll fly out and handle that afterwards. But it's a daily, it's a daily occurrence where there's all this, you know, it's prepped and ready for them to arrive. Not all the, not and all they them, say money doesn't buy fortune. happiness. Money <laughs> buys happiness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, I I do agree that money doesn't buy happiness, but being broke doesn't buy it either. You know, being no. broke is <laughs> is much more miserable than having money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. No, I think we all can agree on that. It's like the Wolf on Wall Street quote. I've been a rich man, and I've been a poor man, and I've been for rich every fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> so then, Mark, uh, Ryan, when are, you, when are you guys sailing out? When are you going? You're in St. Pete right now. And how it's long Pete right now. is it? Uh, it's probably going to take us, depending on how long we stop off at each location on the way there, but... Um, Anywhere from five to seven days to to head to get to um, the Exumas in the Bahamas, and that's sort of where we go up and down until hurricane season starts. Um, we just love it out there. So when so, you leave the harbor of St. Pete, how fast are you going? And like when you're when is is someone always watching? Is someone is no one like like tell me the process? Is it twenty four hours a day? Someone's no at the wheel. Okay, so okay, so firstly, the first question was how fast are we going? It depends on the wind. Um, you know, if there's no wind, we'll motor, but I prefer to sail, so I'll put up more sail, um, if I can. And um, there's a couple of rules that I just have for personal safety because family is on board, so I never push the boat too hard. And overnight, I'll bring, I'll, I'll reduce a lot of the sail in case there's squalls, you know, thunderstorms and that kind of thing at night, so that it's easily handleable. But um. You know, we go maybe five, six knots if it's low wind. If it's really, if it's really good wind, we'll go about eight knots, nine knots. Um, we've got a fairly fast so what's, boat. What's a knot? It's 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 divisible by what mph? Ah, let me see. Knots to miles per hour. Let me ask Google. Knots to miles per hour. There we go. So if we're going nine, which is booking it, we're going ten point three miles per hour. Ha. That's booking it. <laughs> it's it's more than likely going to be about six. So what's six? Six is seven and six a half. Point, yeah, six point nine. Six point nine. So to get from coast to coast, like you've been to the coast, I guess. But like, if you were to try to travel across the Gulf of Mexico, for instance, it would take mm -hmm. like five, six days. No. So from here to the Keys, to the bottom of the Keys, is about two days. Um. You know, if so half of Florida is two days because you're basically small. halfway. Yeah. 
yeah, so we get so, so, or a day and a half, you know, it just depends on, on, on how fast we're going. But so we'll go down to the bottom of the keys, turn around, you know, just check out of the US in, in, in Marathon, and um, we'll just head out straight from there instead of hugging the coastline up to Miami. Um, just given the position of where we're at at the bottom, and, and it is that the Gulf Stream that runs up. So as long as we don't have any opposing winds coming down against that current, we'll just head up into the current and have the wind help us along, and then we'll we'll reach you know a fair bit more speed. I mean that that current moves at two to three knots. Um, so then we're flying <laughs> all the way up. We'll probably check in in Bimini and then you know head head from there across the bank and make our way past the berries um nasa and uh to the exhumers wow Dude, that's cool so wait, do you ever get like hot in like a severe thunderstorm with big waves or anything and then you're or you just break the white line and you pour it for this so thunderstorms you can generally see you can see on radar and um usually they're sort of isolated in areas we did get caught in a monster on the way back from the bahamas the last time um it, it, it was horrible. Uh, we got the tail end of it. I thought, fine, you know, because I slowed us down dramatically. I saw this guy moving in front of us, and 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 it was just, you know, just just even the tail end was just slapping us around. We had two super yachts actually next to us. You know, the the the, the great thing about my boat, I've got a keel, so it digs into the water and it gives us direction. So even with no sail up, we kind of head in a straight line. But a super yacht does not have anything really digging into the water. And that, when a wind like that picks up, I mean, we had 30, 40 knots of wind. Uh, I mean, it, these these boats were just blown. They were right next to us. Like, we could see them, wave to them. They were blown far away. And they actually had to drop anchor just outside of an island and wait for this thing to pass. It was an eye-opener for me. I didn't quite realize how these guys cannot handle um, weather. I mean, they weren't, they weren't super yachts. You know, they were sort of maybe 75 feet, 60 feet, um, more in the sort of motorboat type region. But I mean, they were they were not handling that, that weather very, very well. Um, and I think, you know, that's, there's a good point if you're living in Florida and you want to do these kinds of trips to have a center console too. I mean, you're going to burn money, but then you're moving much quicker. You can go Miami to Bimini in three hours. You're in the Bahamas. I mean, you could do it for a weekend. You could go How there and go. I don't know how fast they go, but they 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 really they haul ass. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of them have three, four engines at the back, six hundred horses each. You know, they're yeah. just killing it, just smashing all the way through. I mean, they can literally go around these things, and or, or they just go right through. You know, they're just booking it all the way through. <laughs> so, so, so there is a, there is an argument for that if you're so close. Um, I think you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to well, do you enjoy sailing? Are you a sailor? And you know, how much fuel are you going to burn because it's not cheap. There's nothing cheap about it. Well, I, I've never been on a like a large sailboat. I've only done like tiny little sailboats when I was a kid, like the 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 one or two man. And I remember making the decision that I am not a sailor. You know, one time, one uh, time I got one time I, I capsized, and it was maybe six feet deep, and I was in yeah. the I was I was in the bay here in Florida, and it did not take long for me to be like, this is not. I don't ever want to do this again. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's what you want. You know, if, if if you enjoy the weather, the wind, the waves. I mean, I love kiting. I love surfing. I love diving. I love, you know, spearfishing. So it's all sort of hand in hand and with the same sort of thing. And, and I get a lot of joy and pleasure out of harnessing the wind to get me somewhere and, you know, tweaking my sails and, you know, just making sure I'm on the right course. And it's a challenge. It's a challenge. I like that. And I think, you know, if if you don't enjoy that, and that's not your cup of tea, I mean, you know, buy a boat with a bunch of engines and burn some fuel. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely am closer to that guy that's like literally in his in his room watching TV while his captain is blasting through <laughs> with four motors. I got my pipe. I'm smoking the pipe. It's got a nice strawberry flavor to it. I might have a martini. And if the martini spills, I get upset and I go, can you fucking do something about this weather so my martini doesn't spill? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be like, listen, it's not a 
Can you please try to take it easy up there? <laughs> I know there's bad weather, but uh, I'm trying to drink a martini. Thank you. Can you make a call? Oh, yeah, can I make that's a closer call? to my personality. Yeah. Yeah. Can Can you make a call and get this? And get God to chill out on this. Oh uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we got um yeah guys we got a we got a we got a lot of stuff to do obviously like this year's a big year it's 2024 we have a lot of brands to manage it's a growing growing list of brands um michael you're you're taking on an interesting portfolio we got we got candle company coming on and you just onboarded a uh um another supplement brand and what's your like What's your focus for the most part, other than the obvious of like grow the brands and make more money, but what's your, what's your focus with these brands that you're taking on right now? Like what you, what do you usually worry about for the first six months? I mean, each brand is different. So like some brands that just have uh, products that are really capable of selling, they're just doing everything wrong. Like the title, the SEO, the PBC, it's just like, then you just fix that stuff up or the graphics. Um, for the most part, like most of the time, I'd say most of the brands take on, this is what I'm finding. Um, it's, it's more about like the product launches. It's choosing the right category of product to launch. Like there's some, there's a recent product launch I did. It's doing like 60, 70 units a day. And, but it was just the, it's just it, the right category fairly, you know, not as high competition, but I high demand. And I think it's the selection of products. I think going against Lemmy is a bad idea. And let me, but let me go yeah. so broad of like, here's some immunity gummies, you know? And so I was like, okay, cool. But if you go and even in like home decor or health or any of those other categories, there's people don't realize that, um, there's so many holes. There's still so many things that haven't been thought of. And there's so many angles to things, you know, like we all know that vitamin C serum is taken. We know that, um, and that hole has been filled. Like there is every possible 80, there's like 80,000 vitamin C serums. It's ridiculous. Right. But, and so that's, I think like, wow. if you want to grow a brand, a big part of it is pick something that you can successfully compete against. And, um, and sometimes in some categories, only a thousand sellers with a certain item and you, and with a, with a very supreme or sublime launch strategy, of course, you'll beat those guys. Cause the one thing you realize, even with big companies, this is the advantage I think, um, Uncle will have is that big companies are still disorganized. They're still all over the place. They're still going to like run out of inventory. They're still going to miss out on keywords. They're still going to let the product sit there for two months, not sell before they get their shit together, you know? And then you, but it's, and if you have your shit together and you're like coming in very strategic, uh, you're going to beat them. And that's the majority of companies, by the way, are completely disorganized. Like it is, it's, it's and you, we can talk to a lot of companies and you'll see that. And then you just can, and if you are organized, you can use that to your advantage. So if you find mm -hmm. a category like that, you get some organization and some like flows behind it and like, what you're going to actually do for your product launch. So like on all the accounts that I'll manage, it's just going to be, um, they're going to sit there. A lot of the products are going to, they're going to, I know that they're going to already have chosen super broad, general, high competition products because every seller does. So it's just like, Hey, if we can get even one product that has an opportunity that is not so highly competitive, uh, and we do the right launch strategy on it, it's selling, you know, 80 units a day at 30 bucks a piece. And then boom, they account like it grows by 30%, you know? Makes sense. You're being scrappy. You're being organized. Yeah, I've seen a lot of brands come in that have launched like 50, 60, 70 SKUs in a year. And every single launch was not even, a, actually a launch isn't even the right word. They just listed it on Amazon, put a few images, wrote a title, and uh, they're all selling maybe one, two a day, maybe one a day um so they're kind of guilty of like over launching over or treating amazon as just something to post you know products and then forgetting the fact that there's actually a there's actually like an algorithm that is going to either bury you or rank you depending on how you do it um but yeah yeah if you're scrappy and you're smart and you're strategic and you're not overdoing it and you're like i'm going to launch you know one product a month two products a month one a quarter whatever you're 
schedule is that is not overextending yourself. So you can actually like properly launch every product that goes out and you can really make sure your team is like keeping eye on the metrics and the PPC and then yeah, you're going to win. Unless you're Courtney Kardashian, you're going to win. Unless you're Courtney Kardashian or Kylie Jenner. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it is about, um, I think back in 2015, it was about quantity of launches. Like how many launches can you get done this year? Because you know that there's going to be like one out of three that are going to just take off. And uh, now it is no, uh, that is definitely not the case anymore. You know, it is, you have to be better than everybody. And I think when the Amazon opportunity came along and it just like got so crowded with products, uh, but there's still a lot of holes. The problem is it's a different platform than it was 10 years ago. So um, you just have to be very strategic and organized and go for quality and really watch your product launch with a, and a lot of love. It requires a lot of great love nowadays. Unlike 10 years ago, I didn't you just throw the crap up there with two images. You sold 100 units a day. It was awesome. I'm interested in these influencer um, Instagram and TikTok influencer pages that your wife was talking about, Michael. Um, these like pages where all they do is just recommend products and they offer discounts and people are following those pages and they're, and the cool thing I like about it is that they're not hiding the fact that they're selling products. They're not like, I am a health and wellness coach and every once in a while I get sold by some brand I don't really believe in and I try to sell you on it. Um, and you see me selling you on a new brand every month and I, and I'm disingenuous, right? Because I'm basically pouring myself out to all these brands. The fact that there's these people who all I do is recommend products that you can buy online that are really cool, that I think are awesome. And I can get you a good deal on them. That's freaking badass because people are just going to buy. No, the, the Amazon finds influencers are huge. But the only thing I'll say is that you can't come in there with a vitamin C syrup, right? Like they don't actually want to take you. The, the, the Amazon finds is about, they actually have amazing life hack prop products. Like for your mm, It's got to be the right product. It, yeah. So if you're coming in there and you want your product to go viral, it has to be a life hack product. It can't be like a new collagen powder. They're like, yeah, go fuck yourself. No, <laughs> no they're, they're even there. You're like, yeah, no, you know, unless you offer them a bajillion dollars to go and just like bribe them to do it. But even so, they're going to ruin their channel, right? They're going to ruin their channel with a collagen product. So you have to, mm. if it's innovative, new, different, it's a life hack. Like it solves a problem that, and a lot, that's why these videos go viral is you look, if you look at these Amazon finds things, you're like, oh my God, I need that. You know, it's that's the products they're doing on those channels. Like, mm. I can't believe I ever thought about that. I'll need that for my house. And then, of course, they sell 30,000 units. What if it's like a so then how do you do that in a supplement space? You have to have a pretty exciting new formula at that point, right? Yeah, like it, it's got to be it's got to be uh, an innovative product, you know, it's something unique. So um, and that's what's tough in supplements. It's like. There are supplements, but they're different. It's just, whoa, that's lots of actually, I need that, you know, but what's like that? There's, a, there's some other some still out there, but what is like? I don't have a good answer. I think maybe on it was really good about that. They, you know, they got the whole Joe Rogan sponsorship. They were pretty, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting. It was very influencer based. Um, and then, um, paleo Valley does a really good job of, of, are you guys familiar with paleo Valley? Yeah, I think so. I've, I've, I've heard of, heard of them. No. They, they do a good job on their social. Um, they're all about paleo Valley is all about, I don't, I feel, I feel like paleo Valley is just kind of a, a, a misnomer because they're really, really focusing on like the carnivore keto market. And they do a lot of like collagens and proteins that are isolated from animal products, um, livers, liver capsules, you know, again, all animal proteins and animal byproducts. So, I don't know if paleo is really the proper naming for it, but they do a really good job of like um, getting influencers to support the product and converting. And I recommend anybody listening to this pod to like go on Instagram, search Paleo Valley and tell me what you think of the ads because they get a lot of engagement, a lot of comments. And I can just tell 
it's uh, it gets traction. So this is an area I want to dive into a lot more. I really want to dive into like what works on social, what's and what's the difference between the social platforms. What what works on a YouTube channel versus an Instagram uh, page versus a TikTok uh, influencer. I keep hearing TikTok's the wild west. No one can really control it. It's kind of out of control. You either you either hit gold or you hit nothing. Um, where Instagram is a little bit more formulaic. A little bit more like one plus one does kind of equal two. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna dive into that this year. It's gonna be it's gonna be kind of like my little homework and study of like the psychology of these platforms, why they work, how they work, and what I can do to apply that to our clients. I mean, the thing like uh, that I learned because I've done a lot of TikTok stuff. Um, there's a lot of videos, um, some of which uh, did hit, some didn't. But um, it's like TikTok is the only way to, to have a percentage of success is a lot of work going into each influencer. And I mean, like probably custom briefs for the influencer. Like, mm-hmm. and that's what most, uh, you'll see 99% of the companies best in stuff. It's just like finding an influencer. Oh, they're big. And let's try to get them to do a video. It's like, no, you have to have, you have to thoroughly research the influencer and the audience and what type of videos they are making on a daily basis. And then um, they're doing a morning routine, they're doing Amazon finds. You can't stray from their type of video. They've already had 3000 views. You don't wanna change the formula they're doing. But then now how does your product actually include in what they already are doing? And how do you place your product within their uh, sphere of what they are? You know, and then, and then what kind of content are they talking about or how are they featuring it? And then it gets so specific for each influencer and that's why it's like sometimes it's so much work that goes into even one and then you have to do like and then the odds are it's still all viral but your odds of success are higher mm. so and then now you have to do that times 50 and you can imagine the huge team you have to build to do all of that work for one influencer times that by 10 and therefore it's now starts to get a little bit unconfrontable you know <laughs> interesting yeah no, that makes sense all right, guys. Well, uh, we 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 did it, man. We we did the first ep, and it's going to be first of many. We're gonna we're, this is going to be a weekly conversation, and um, we'll see where this takes us. I don't know if this is going to add any value to anyone's life. I don't know if anyone's going to give a shit hearing us talk. I mean, this might go completely nowhere, and a year from now, we might have three people listening that are just such a, you know, that are basically our brothers or sisters or family members, or we actually attract a crowd and we get somewhere. I don't have huge expectations. I actually don't have any expectations, but I like the fact that we're doing it and I wanna be consistent with it. Um, and um, I just wanna see where it goes. Well, I think we should we should take it and splice it and put it in different places. I mean, there's gonna be there's little gems in here, you know? I think Ryan's sales story is a nice gem. I think, uh, I think yeah, the- Yeah, I think the, Ryan's well, sales story is gonna be the highlight. Well, I think the well, whole thing about- Ryan, Ryan sales story. Well, look at it like this. And I'm going to, I'm going to say this now for anybody who's splicing this, just, you need to take Ryan's, Ryan's little description and, and get people to imagine a small, like a sailboat, a simple sailboat that has a, what do you call it? A keel? Yeah. Is, is doing a better job getting through the storm than a big ass yacht that's kind of got a flat bottom right that's right and I, I feel like that's an analogy to life in a way like the sailboat you know cuts through the ocean and the yacht gets flown about yeah 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 true story i i couldn't believe it when i saw it but it's uh you know it opened my eyes to you know what what's a really seaworthy boat you know what what's really going to be able to get you there and i mean i i, I should I, sh- I shouldn't have any doubts because i've gotten halfway around the world on this boat so I already know, you know, I've already been through horrible storms. I already know, but to see how it compares to others, that's, that's, that's the big thing. <clears throat> you know, if you've got a keel, you've got something built for direction and, and, and rugged and getting you somewhere versus something that's just thrown together so that you can throw a lot of money at it. That's the difference. So there you go. That's kind of the moral of the story, whatever that moral is. I love it. <laughs> yeah all right guys well uh this is uh 
episode one of hundreds and I'll see you guys next week and uh, we'll see where the, uh, we'll see where the boat takes us. Sounds good. All right. Cheers guys. guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.